Hello everyone. As you know, we're in chapter 12 and today's lecture covers section 12.3 to 12.5. In 12.3, our section covers the preparation of alcohols via substitution and addition reactions. A lot of these are going to be reactions that are familiar to you from Organic 1, and then we'll see a few new reactions. We're reminded first of substitution reactions where we need to have a primary, secondary, or tertiary substituted carbon with some kind of leaving group reacting with a nucleophile. And depending on whether the substrate is primary, secondary, or tertiary, we'll use different reagents. When we have a primary substituted alcohol, then we want to accomplish an SN2 reaction, and for that we're going to use a strong base, strong nucleophile, sodium hydroxide. For secondary alkyl halides, we can't use the same conditions because the strong base sodium hydroxide favors the E2 product. Instead, we want to have a reaction with a weak base that's a strong nucleophile to favor an SN1 reaction, so here we treat our secondary alkyl halide with water. Here you want to be aware of the potential for carbocation rearrangement. This can be movement of a, a hydrogen, a methyl group, an alkyl group. It can be a ring expansion as well. In tertiary alcohols, we don't need to worry about carbocation rearrangement because our carbocation intermediate is already tertiary, so it's not going to move anywhere. In addition reactions, we've got three sets of conditions that will yield alcohols. In the first case, we have the reaction with acidic water, so this will be dilute um, sulfuric acid, which we can write as H3O plus or the hydronium ion. Then in our second case, we're treating with mercury acetate and water, and then in the second step, sodium borohydride as a reducing agent. And what's important here is that because we're going through this mercurium ion intermediate, this avoids carbocation rearrangement. In the third case, we do a hydrogenation, or hydroboration oxidation. This is a hydroboration oxidation reaction with BH3THF, hydrogen peroxide, and sodium hydroxide. While you don't need to know the mechanism itself, you should be aware of what the key intermediate is, where you've got boron positioned at the less substituted carbon atom, and that's what ends up giving you the oxygen atom at that less substituted carbon. In the next section, we have preparation of alcohols via reduction reactions. And before we get into reactions themselves, first we're going to review oxidation states, which is importantly not the same as formal charges. Let's consider hydrogen substituted carbon atoms with various, various numbers of oxygen atoms also attached. In the central case with formaldehyde, we have an oxidation state of zero. And when we go to the right, our oxidation state increases by an order by um, two points for going to the carboxylic acid and by two more points by going to carbon dioxide. Whereas if we go to the left and have the alcohol, now we've got a minus two oxidation state, and methane itself has an oxidation state of minus 4. If you are going from one of the molecules toward the left, um, toward something on, a right, on the right, then you are accomplishing an oxidation reaction, whereas if you're going from starting material somewhere on the left to somewhere further to the right, then you have a reduction reaction. How do we get to oxidation states? We need to break all the bonds heterolytically except for carbon-carbon bonds, and we want to give electrons to the more electronegative atom. So let's look at the first molecule, acetone. 
Now we've got two CH3 groups that are implied. And next to it, I've drawn the Lewis structure. In green, I'm going to highlight what atoms, um, how, or what electrons go with the carbon atom. So that's going to be one electron each per carbon carbon bond. And then the oxygen atom itself is going to get all of the electrons in that carbon oxygen pi bond. So we only have two electrons that belong to carbon, which gives us an oxidation state of plus two. Next, let's look at the equivalent alcohol. I'll add those implied carbon atoms. And in green, I'll highlight what belongs to the carbon. We get one carbon from the carbon-carbon bonds. And then carbon gets both electrons in the carbon-hydrogen bond. And with oxygen, it again takes all of the electrons that are between the carbon and oxygen bond. Now carbon owns four electrons, which gives us an oxidation state of zero. So our first reduction reaction is one that you've seen before. It is the reduction of a carbonyl carbon with hydrogen and a catalyst is um, either palladium, platinum, or nickel. Here we've got hydrogen adding across the pi bond. So we've got one hydrogen that's shown that I'll highlight in blue. And then we added another hydrogen atom across that carbonyl carbon so that we're getting addition of elemental H2 across the pi bond, giving us an alcohol, a secondary alcohol in this case. Next, our new reaction is reduction with hydride-like reagents. And we're not actually going to use the reagent sodium hydride because it is simply too reactive. We need to tone down the reactivity by using a reducing agent that is a hydride-like source, such as sodium borohydride or lithium aluminum hydride. An example of this reaction is shown here where we're adding um, hydrogen that actually comes from the ethanol molecule, whereas the hydrogen in green is what gives us the hydrogen bound to carbon. Let's look at the mechanism for this reaction to see how it works. We start with our ketone and borohydride, and then we're going to take one of these boron hydrogen bonds and use the electrons in this bond as our nucleophile. And we're looking for what is the electrophilic atom. And here our electrophilic atom is the carbonyl carbon. So that's where hydride is going to attack. We know that this is our electrophile because if we draw a dipole moment, it goes from the carbon to the oxygen, giving that carbon atom a partial positive charge. So it's a sink for electrons. If we draw this one arrow only, we would violate the octet rule. So we need to break the carbon-oxygen double bond and give those electrons to the oxygen atom. In our second step, we're going to use the solvent molecule ethanol and we'll protonate the resultant alkoxide which yields our alcohol and the ethoxide ion and these are in equilibrium and it's going to favor the protonation of the alcohol simply because the um, ethoxide from ethanol um, ethanol is present in excess here this reaction is useful because it doesn't react with alkenes and alkynes. We can start with a compound that has two pi bonds, a carbon-carbon pi bond and a carbon-oxygen pi bond. 
and only the carbon-oxygen bond reacts. We have our carbon-carbon pi bond is still intact here. So this is an important reaction to complement the hydrogenation with elemental hydrogen and the palladium catalyst. Lithium aluminum hydride is a more powerful reducing agent than sodium borohydride and it can be used to reduce esters and carboxylic acids. I've shown one example where we have a simple carboxylic acid reduced with lithium aluminum hydride. So let's make a note out here to the right that LiAlH4 is the same thing as LaH. So we'll use the chemical formula and the abbreviation interchangeably. With an excess of lithium aluminum hydride, we reduce the carboxylic acid all the way down to the primary alcohol. And let's look at that backbone. We've got three carbon atoms there, three carbon atoms here. So that reduction is taking place um, at the carbonyl carbon. In the second case, we've got an ester, again with three carbon atoms connected to that carbonyl, three carbon atoms in the product, reducing the ester all the way down to the primary alcohol. The mechanism for this reaction is in, involves two attacks of the carbonyl carbon with lithium aluminum hydride. And so we're going to start our arrow at the aluminum hydrogen bond. And then again, we're looking for the sink of the electrons, which is the carbonyl carbon. We need to break the carbon oxygen double bond to put that lone pair on to oxygen. In our second step, an electron lone pair from the oxygen atom, it comes down to reform the carbon carbon pi bond. And here we kick out methoxide as our leaving group. We have an additional reduction of the aldehyde that's formed. And we have to continue to do this because the aldehyde is in fact more reactive than the ester. So if we have lithium aluminum hydride around and it encounters the aldehyde, it's going to undergo a reduction even faster than residual starting material. So again, we've attacked that carbonyl carbon forming the alkoxide. Then in step two, we treat the alkoxide with water in a simple acid base reaction, and that gives us the alcohol plus the hydroxide ion. It should stand out to you that we've just made methoxide a leaving group, and we know that methoxide is a poor leaving group because it's a strong base. Here, the conditions are so forceful that an alko alkoxide is served, serves as the leaving group. And we'll see in various reactions of esters that we can make alkoxides leaving groups depending on the reaction conditions. In the next section, we focus on the preparation of diols and the reaction of um, diketones or dialdehydes is going to lead to the formation of diols because we're treating two carbonyls with a hydrogen or hydride, I should say, source. And that gives us a double reduction where we're adding hydrogen across the pi bond. So this is just the same thing as what we've done before, but twice. Also recall from chapter nine that we have the syn and anti-dihydroxylation of, of an alkene. So here we can use MCPBA, which is one of our per acids it's got this oxygen-oxygen double bond, or ox, o, it's got 
not double bond, it's um, an oxygen-oxygen single bond, but the reason it's a per acid is that we've got two oxygen atoms here instead of the carboxylic acid that only has one oxygen between the carbon and the hydrogen atom. We also know from the chapter on addition reactions that we can use osmium tetroxide or potassium permanganate to form the syn diol. The reason that we get the syn diol is that we're going through intermediates that have syn addition of the oxygen atoms across the pi bond. And again, this is a reaction that you don't need to know the mechanism for, but you should know these intermediates because they are critical to achieving the syn position of hydroxide units in the diol that is formed. That's all for today's lecture. If you have questions, let me know.